Hey. Uh, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, tonight is March 11th, 2024. It's 8.06 p.m. Um, we are <clears throat> kicking off our um, study of religions um, and uh, acknowledgement of religions, uh, something that we're working to develop uh, in the office of <clears throat> chaplain, um, the original we'll we'll get into how it how it developed. But tonight uh, we're just gonna <clears throat> go straight into um, the texts uh, of the Bible. We'll we'll go into Genesis <clears throat> uh, just to get a grounding of the text. We won't spend too much time, and we'll kind of you know if there's somewhere else we want to go, um, we can do that as well. Um, and then we'll look at uh, the first. Surah of the Quran, which is uh, synonymous with, with chapters, um, and have a discussion about those texts. Um, let me see. So, if I'll just um, let me see. Do I need to do this? Is this a? I'm not gonna do the rituals or anything. We're just gonna go straight into the mini. If you would, um, you can't come off mute, Peter, after me, just to open up. One God. I'm by myself. One aim. <laughs> one, one aim. One aim. One destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. All right. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters. So, <clears throat> as I was saying. Um, the idea for tonight came about from um, a, a discussion. Um, sister, our sister Sicily uh, actually promoted the idea of a prayer call. Um, so we were supposed to discuss that last night. And um, once a week, um, I chose the day Monday, uh, we were going to do a, a morning <clears throat> prayer call. So I think we were talking about seven o'clock uh, in the morning. Just a brief, you know, um, a brief prayer um, and, uh, you know, motivation for the, for the day and for the week. <clears throat> Sister Cicely, anything you want to share on, on the original vision and how we got to where we are? Sorry, excuse my son, but um, I don't know. I just think it's healthy and beneficial to infuse uh, every situation with prayer, you know? Um conversations with God. We got to ask for what we want, right? I don't know if you are muted, but we can't hear you. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm over here having a whole speech. <laughs> um, thank you, Sister Cicely. Um, yes, uh, what I was saying is um, just I wanted to thank Sister Cicely for bringing this back to the forefront. Um, we There's a lot of programs and there's a lot of offices um, that we need to develop within our division of the UNIA membership, youth, um, our defense program. Um, of course, we talked about secretaries, financial, uh, business department, um, but we can't <clears throat> skip over our um, spiritual development is the best way I can say it. So um, yeah, I, I like the idea. I like the concept. We didn't get a chance to I, it was, you know, I had it on the, um, I think I had it on the agenda yesterday. Let me pull that up. Matter of fact, since we uh, I had it up, I did have it on the agenda for yesterday, but I just didn't get to it. Um, let me share here. So we talked about high executive council um, and we kind of got into resolutions and amendments, um, but we did have a topic or uh, item of Monday call. Uh, so that's what this was about, it was just, uh, yeah, keeping us spiritually grounded. Um, and, and as I was saying when I was on mute, students of the course of African philosophy and Garveyites, you know, in general should understand 
um, the influence um, that religion played on on Mr. Garvey and I would argue um, his success, you know, so um, we may not believe in everything that we're reading or hearing uh, may not be our faith, um, but we do need to understand uh, these texts um, from a, even from a from a propaganda standpoint, these texts uh, in themselves, you know, have an influence on billions of people, billions of our people. <clears throat> so for that for that standpoint alone, um, I feel we have a responsibility to, to stay grounded um, in our spiritual texts. Um, so, yeah, any questions, comments, thoughts um, before I continue? Okay. Um, and again, this is our first time doing this. Uh, it will evolve. It will grow and change. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll talk about the importance, the significance to me uh, as we get to the end. That app. Oh, app. Just want to read the book. Download. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so again, um, in regards to how we got here, um, the idea of the the uh, prayer messages or prayer call. Um, is definitely something that we will pick up and we will do. Um, but I do want to make sure everyone, let's see, I don't like to start in the middle, basically. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get a grounding from the beginning. We'll discuss uh, what we understand, what we don't understand, and how it applies. Um, we we're not going to necessarily go through the whole text, obviously, chapter by chapter, but at least for our first uh, meeting, um, let's get grounded on on the text themselves. Um, Sister Diane, greetings. Greetings. Grace first. Grace first. Um, why, and I would ask, I want Sister Diane and Brother Art, uh, why is, why what gives us an obligation to read the Bible as Garveyites? What did Garvey tell us about the Bible? He says that um, that people read the Bible, I guess, to win arguments or whatever. What not you? But uh, it's true. Um. Uh, I, I don't know. That's either here nor there, but you know, um, there are a lot of uh, valuable things in the Bible that could be used for different things. You know, for winning arguments, for even talking about business. There are principles in the Bible, you know, that you can utilize, like talking about sowing and reaping, and yes, things it's like that. As far as, let me see, and Brother Art, maybe you can jump in as well, but um, how often should we read the Bible, basically, and how much of Daily. it? Daily. How much? My take, my take of it is um, the Bible gives us a grounding on who we are, hmm. um, yeah. and we should read it daily. <laughs> Uh, at least a chapter a day. Exactly. That's there. Yeah, that, that's what I was looking for. Um, per uh, the course of African philosophy, um, Mr. Garvey encourages us to read uh, at least a chapter of the Bible every day. So uh, this goes. That's, that's, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that's according to him, though. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that's wrong. There's benefits you know, to be derived, um, you know, but uh, <laughs> I just, just so many things about the Bible and the Quran that it's like the way I've, the way I've heard it put is that 
Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all stems from African African uh, spirituality. So, so my thing is, I mean, I was involved a lot with the Bible before. Um, so I don't not saying anything is wrong with it, but the Bible and the Quran all came from our stuff. It's like they took our stuff, they repackage it, and they sell it back to us with a lot of changes. But uh, but anyway, um, I'm saying that uh, I don't think. I mean, Mr. Garvey was a Christian, so it makes perfect sense that he would say that. But um, I don't know. It's kind. Of, that's why I say it's kind of here or there. I mean, there's value to be gained from it, but there's some other stuff we could read too. But I mean, if this is the the format and this is the way it needs to be done, I'm, I'll. I'll listen to you. I'm sorry. I don't sound like wishy-washy, but does that make any sense what I'm saying? To an extent. Um, first, in regards to the format, um, which this the format is still being defined. This is our first time doing this. So um, what we do, we're, we're still learning. We're still figuring things out. Um, um, so... Uh, as we figure things out, one of the things that I recommended was um, a level of grounding, um, at least uh, understanding the beginning uh, of each text um, before we <clears throat> uh, jump to any particular chapter. So that's how we got to um, this format. But um, my, my other question was just, <clears throat> just in regards to, um, again, as, as Mr. Garvey uh, taught it. You know, what 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 did he recommend? <clears throat> That's all. Um, he didn't, you know, uh, I don't know his exposure with the Quran, um, you know, but he doesn't really talk much about the Quran. He was, you know, as, as Sister Diane said, he was a Christian, um, Roman Catholic, uh, to, to my understanding. So Bible was his foundation. Um, so, you know. But um, yeah, it's well, I read the Bible personally from a historical standpoint. Um, it's one of the oldest uh, texts, you know, to be mass produced. So, um, yeah, I just read it from that standpoint. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, there's one fellow. He's uh, he's got a really long book, and I listened to it, but I didn't really sit down and study it. It's called From Hebrews to Negroes, and he goes in and talk all about the Bible being black people's story. So from that perspective is where, where he comes and And then I know of another book. Um, that one is called um, The Epic of Humanity. And that book is talking about all the manuscripts that came before the Bible. In fact, some of the manuscript where the Bible texts came from. So... I mean, I don't know. I my I've not over the years, my views just kind of change a little bit because I used to be, I used to be hang out with the Jehovah's Witnesses, and you know they're like in depth into the Bible. So I used to, you know, I'm not that good at it anymore. But I used to like just know where the scriptures are coming from. But then once I'm learning about. Um, where a lot of the Bible stuff comes from. In fact, the older manuscripts that, you know, predates the Bible, it just kind of make it like, okay, you know, a little, yeah. It's like it put me in a position where, okay, you take some of it with a grain of salt kind of thing. That's kind of the attitude I, I have about it. But yeah, but there's some value in it because they, they had to get it from somewhere. So they mix it up with, their stuff. But anyway, I'm sorry. I don't I shouldn't I shouldn't put my spin there like that. Um but again that's why I just wanted to go to the text. Um um and and I mean I you know some people say the text is perfect. Um 
I do think that there are questions that are not answered uh, in, in both of the texts. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> that's just my, my, you know, criticism. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions before we get into the reading of uh, Genesis? <clears throat> okay. Um, this is, I believe, oh, this is ESV. Let me get that. The most used is King James. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, so we'll be reading uh, Genesis chapter one, verse, well, Genesis uh, chapter one. Um, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was vo without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good and said, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed in itself upon the earth, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass an herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself and af after his kind. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the, to divide the night from, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them, into the, God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every creature living that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. 
and to every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was good in the evening and the morning were the sixth day so um i will stop there that uh is the first chapter of king james bible um, well, no, that's the yeah, we chapter one of Genesis, the book of Genesis. Um, any questions, comments before we go to our other reading? Let me pull up uh, the other file. Um, John. Yes, sir. What version of the King James Bible was that? I don't know. Um, do you have a King James Bible? Because I was hoping somebody could. I don't like reading text like that offline because I always feel like they change and stuff. But uh, yeah, that sounds. That's why I was um asking. Um. Yeah, but what I have is old man. It's dial this and dial that. You know. Um, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, the language. Um, brother Art, I just sent the link on the WhatsApp group. The link for what? okay, thank you. Yeah, you can tap on the link and it will take you to the King James version. Yeah, I got an older version. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. This is the one I want. Oh, this thing is crazy. <clears throat> I'm not talking about, I'm talking about, um, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm pulling up the, um, the Quran. Okay, that's not bad. It's, it's legible. But, um, okay. So, again, um, um, we just finished um, a chapter of the Bible. Um, we're still working on how to, you know, developing this program, uh, but we do want to have a spiritual focus um program and, and office uh in in our division and sister sicily uh, again has been <clears throat> uh, passionate about uh, making sure we do this so um monday has been the day we'll try to you know we'll, we'll try to coordinate a monday morning um prayer as as originally suggested um, but until that actually happens. <clears throat> uh, I still want to take advantage of of the day and the opportunity. So, <clears throat> um, if there aren't any questions, I'll briefly read a little bit of the opening of the Quran, and then um, we can open for a few minutes for questions and discussion, and uh, and close out. So, uh, any questions, comments so far before I start? Okay. All right, um, so this is the, the Quran, Holy Quran. Um, it's, it's like the Bible. You know, we, we know most of us are, are common and familiar with the Bible. Um, this would be a version of the Bible um, that um, most of the, the Eastern um, part of the world uses. Um, but it's the second, it's either second or first uh, largest religion uh, next to Christianity. So we're just going to read a little bit of the beginning, um, just so we'll have a, an introduction, uh, not really anything to, to, to talk about much, but um, at least give us a, a grounding and a starting. So uh, the Quran opens with um, something called the opening. Uh, it says, in the name of God, oh my goodness, no, this is not, this isn't, this is terrible. 
There we go. Uh, you got to change the addition to a law. That's crazy. Um, in Islam, obviously, they, they you know, God is is uh, synonymous with Allah. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. The gracious, the merciful, praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, master of the day of judgment. It is you we worship, and upon you we call for help. Uh, guide us to the straight path, the path of those you have blessed, not of those against whom there is anger, nor of those who are misguided. So um, very straightforward opening. Um, this is very long. I think this is the longest chapter in the text, so I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I'm not going to be able to read the whole thing. Uh, it's called Al-Bakara um, or uh, the, the heifer. Um, I thought it was the cow. It's the cow in other translations. In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful, Alim Lam Mean. Alif Lam Mean. That's what that translates to. Uh, this is the book in which there is no doubt a guide for the righteous. Those who believe in the unseen and perform the prayers and give from what we have provided for them. And those who believe in what was revealed to you and what is revealed before you and are certain of the hereafter. These are upon guidance from their Lord. These are the successful. As for those who disbelieve, it is the shame for them. It is the same for them. Whether you have warned them or have not warned them, they do not believe. Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing and over their vision as a veil. They will have a severe torment. Among the people are those who say, we believe in Allah in the last day, but they are not believers. They seek to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they deceive not. They believe they deceive none but themselves, though they are not aware. In their hearts is sickness and Allah has increased their sickness they will have a painful punishment because of their denial. And when it is said to them, do not make trouble on earth, they say, we are only reformers. In fact, they are the troublemakers, but they are not aware. And when it is said to them, believe as the people have believed, they say, shall we believe as the fools have believed? In fact, it is they who are the fools, but they do not know. And when they, crawl, they come across those who believe, they say, we believe, but when they are alone with their devils, they say, we are with you. We are, we were only ridiculing. It is Allah who ridicules them and leaves them bewildered in their transgression. Those are they who have bartered error for guidance, but their trade does not profit them and they are not guided. Their likeness is that of a person who kindled a fire when it illuminated all around him. Allah took away their light, and left them in darkness, unable to see. Deaf, dumb, blind, they will not return. Or like a cloud burst from the sky in which, a, which is darkness and thunder and lightning, they press their fingers into their ears from the thunderbolts in fear of death. But Allah surrounds the disbelievers. The lightning almost snatches their sight away. Whenever it illuminates for them, they walk in it. But when it grows dark over them, they stand still. Had Allah willed, he could have taken away their hearing and their sight. Allah is capable of everything. O people, worship your Lord who created you and those before you that you may attain piety. He who made the earth a habitat for you and the sky a structure and sends water down from the sky and brings out fruits thereby as a sustenance for you. Therefore, do not assign rivals to Allah while you know. And if you are in doubt about what we have revealed to our servant, then produce a chapter like these and call your witnesses apart from Allah if you are truthful. But if you do not and you will not, then beware the five worst, the five, the fire whose fuel is people and stones prepared for the disbelievers and God and give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds, that they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are, are, they are provided with fruit therefrom as sustenance, they will say, this is what we were provided with before, and they will be given the like of it. And they will have pure spouses therein, and they will abide therein forever. This is what we were provided with before. 
Allah does not shy away from making an example of a gnat or something above it. As for those who believe, they know it is the time, it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they will say, what did Allah intend by this example? He leads astray many thereby, and he guides many thereby, and he misleads thereby only the evildoers. Those who violate Allah's covenant after its confirmation are and sever what Allah has commanded to be joined and commit evil on earth. These are the losers. How can you deny Allah when you were dead? And he gave you life and he put you to death. If, and he gave you life, then he will put you to death. Then he will bring you to life. Then to him will you be returned. <clears throat> uh, it is he who created for you everything on earth and turned to the heaven and made them seven heavens. And he is aware of all things. When your Lord said to the angels, I am placing a successor on earth, they said, Will you place in it someone who will cause corruption in it and shed blood while we declare your praises and, sanct and sanctify you? He said, I know what you do not know. And he taught the and he taught Adam the names, all, all of them. Then he presented them to the angels and said, tell me the names of these if you are sincere. Uh, I'll stop there. I only read, uh, I think, uh, less, uh, chapter one of the Bible had 31 verses. Yeah, verses. Uh, so... I'll just read those verses of the Quran. Um, yeah, and, and stop there. So, so Sister Sicily, anything that you, did you want to have a general prayer or anything that you wanted to add? Um, not at this time, but I enjoy what, um, what you just presented for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else, any questions, comments, concerns, any Anything and in inspirations. <laughs> no. Okay. Um last thing, just it's, it's interesting to um <clears throat> to listen to the part about the Quran because I've heard <laughs> I've heard so many things, you know, that is this, it's that, and I mean my neighbor is a is a He's a seven day Adventist and he's like, oh, the Quran tells you this and that and that and all kind of stuff. But I'm like, I think he said the Quran tells you to kill people. I'm like, the Bible tells you to kill people, too. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, but um, it's good to uh, I've never actually read anything in the Quran. So it's interesting, you know, to get that perspective as well. Mm -hmm. And that uh, excellent comment, Sister Diane. That's that's exactly what this was about. Um, we've heard several things about both of these texts, um, but what you know, what have we dis discovered and discussed uh, amongst ourselves? So um, as we get further into these texts, um, let's at least start, um, you know, with it with an introduction, like a handshake, you know, just. A greeting. So, uh, anybody else questions, comments? Yeah, uh, I've read both the Quran and the Bible mm -hmm. and the Jewish book, and they all are similar in the first uh, few chapters. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. I got you. Yeah, I've, I've you know, I've, I've read well. Yeah, I've read the Bible more than the Quran, but. Um, what you're saying yeah they almost you know it's like they're saying the same thing but in a different way yep yep yeah i'm with you um, uh it's 8 40 one thing that i wanted to as to why i felt passionate about you know continuing with today i didn't even realize it when we initially um uh, set forth today but um for our brothers and sisters and i'm actually um doing this as well anybody familiar with ramadan yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um i'm not a muslim by you know complete practice but i do practice some of some of their beliefs 
Um, and Ramadan is one of those. Um, and actually, Mr. Garvey promotes to us um, in uh, the five-year plan, I caught it this year. He talks about sacrifice, um, some type of sacrifice. It's like a sacrifice charity or something like that. But foregoing certain things, um, you know, for for financial purpose. Um, and I would definitely, you know, but but the point is today is the first day of Ramadan. Um, it's like a month long tradition. Um, it's uh, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, Ramadan is considered one of the holiest months of the year for Muslims. Uh, in Ramadan, Muslims commemorate the revel the revelation of the Quran and the fast from food and drinking during sunlight hours as a means of drawing closer to God and cultivating self control, gratitude, and compassion for those less fortunate. Uh, so that's one of the big things is. No eating or drinking while the sun is out. Um, it's a challenge, um, but it it does help the the, the pockets in the in the back end. Uh, Ramadan is a month of intense spiritual rejuvenation with the heightened focus on devotion, during which Muslims spend extra time reading the Quran, performing special prayers. Those unable to fast, such as pregnant or nursing women, sick or elderly people, and children, are exempt from fasting. Uh, and this comes from Islam. Um, I forgot. Mm -hmm. Islam network group is, is, is the website. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is an important month for our um, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, and we should take that in, into uh, consideration. That's, that was my main thing. Yes. And that also, uh, that's similar to what the Christians do uh, in the month before this, in February, they have Lent. And Lent um, I didn't know it was in February. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it starts in February, right? I don't. I didn't know. I mean, I, I I've heard of people practicing it, but I didn't know when it was. And then it go. It starts in February and it goes up to Easter. Paste the link in the chat. You talking about the link for this, uh, Sister Elizabeth? Sister. Yes. Yes, please, Brother John. No problem. It just. I can grab the link and we'll go over it after. Sure. Pretty long. But um, that was the importance of today. Uh, first day of Ramadan, I felt like it'd be, it's perfectly in line with um, uh, uh, um, strengthening our spirituality. Uh, so uh, we weren't able to do the prayer call in the morning, but um, we were able to have this meeting uh, tonight. So uh, we'll try to continue this um, next Monday as well. Um, definitely, you know, if anyone has any topics or chapters uh, that they would like to, to be read, that would be helpful as well. So Sister Cicely, did you have anything? I don't have anything else. No. Thank you. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm good. Anybody have any questions, comments as we close out? I'm good. All right, give me one second. I'm going to time this. Closing out. Hold on a second. Here it is. Okay. 
I can't find it. Uh, I can't find it right now. Um, I can't find it right now. We'll close out. But uh, next meeting, I will bring up the um, when Mr. Garvey talked about. Uh, I thought it was sacrifice, but I'm not seeing that word. But foregoing certain things uh, so that we can benefit later on. But oh, the reason why that was important was because HEC is coming up, uh, and yeah, this is a good way. It's also a good way to kind of save money for HEC. So that's all I got, and uh, we will close out. If there are any questions or comments or concerns. Okay. Yeah, would we please go ahead? I said thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sister Diane. I'm just in this book. I just got to read the lesson over. All right. Um, if you would, um, please come off mute, put your black fist in the air, repeat after me. One God. One God. One aim. One aim. One, one destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. Africa. 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 For the Africans. For, For the Africans. Africans. Those at home. Those, those at, at home. home. And those abroad. And, and those, those abroad. abroad. Race, race, family. And you are pulling that group.